I bought a $300 mouse, so you don't have to. But maybe you should? Hello everyone, today we're taking a deep dive into Razer's $300 Holy Grail, the Viper Mini Signature Edition. I spent the past week, day in and day out, really pushing this mouse to its limit to see whether it's really worth the outrageous price tag. But before we get into the nerd stuff, let's have a quick unboxing. Okay, so onto this quick unboxing here. The packaging is great. I mean, you're paying $300 for something, so it better be great. Um, but it has this really cool opening mechanism where everything kind of just flips out and spazzes. You get this company letter saying, thanks for toasting your money with us, which is, uh, you know what? I guess that's fine when you're spending 300 bucks. I'd like a thank you letter for spending my money. Um, keyboard shouldn't be there. Shh, we'll pretend that's not there. Be quiet. That's a leak. Okay. Pretend, pretend y'all didn't see that. Um, um, besides that, the packaging is really nice. Uh, comes with some nice textures here on the side. Um, this is all textured, by the way. It feels very, very premium. You get a full leather case here um, with these magnetic hinges on the back. And this one on the front kind of just locks in. Very cool feeling. Um, you do have the mouse, which is obviously great. And we'll talk about that later. And it even comes with this little thing here that says signature edition. That makes you feel kind of rich whenever you open it up, which I think is sick. Um, it comes with some cool accessories, which let's get into those very, very quickly. Um, comes with an accessory packet like this. You flip it open, you get a little microfiber cloth to wipe down your mouse, and you get um, a bunch of accessories that come in here. And um, you get two alcohol prep pads along with skates. Why does it always do that? Um, <laughs> second time me trying to do an unboxing video and it keeps messing up. Um, but yeah, it comes with PTFE skates and some glass skates as well. And then you get some grips, which I think are essential if you're gonna be maining the mouse because uh, the coating on it isn't the best, but like I said, we'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty cool for an accessory pack as well as the microfiber cloth. It comes with a pamphlet and whatever with the sticker. This is just like all fiber products. This is like your warranty, one year thingy and how to use it. Plus, you know, a bunch of other terms and surface sort of esque papers, um, which I mean, you don't really care about to be honest when you're <laughs> buying a mouse, um, but it's there, it's there because I need to put it there. Um, get a cool base packaging here with the braided USB-C cable tied around the bottom and the 8K dongle, which 8K wireless is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's very well made. As you guys can see, I still have my plastic and everything on it because um, it's not the shape for me, but we'll talk about that later. But I do think it's a very good mouse. Um, maybe not $300 worth, but I think it's cool. Um, so yeah, let's get into the actual spec reviews. Now onto the spec stuff here, Razer made this thing out of a magnesium alloy and they weren't the first to do it. I'm not sure if Final Mouse was either, uh, but they were definitely uh, the first in the market to really do 8K polling wirelessly and do it, you know, well implemented at least so it doesn't like stutter or break your computer. I think they did a really good job with that. Um, and, you know, for it being a Razer product, um, it's not like an end game product where it's gonna be super, super durable and like, you know, egg shape hardcore very adorable so you can probably creak it it does have some slide flex if you really squeeze into it you can even hear some creaking i don't know if you can hear that on camera but there's some side flex and some creaking but it's definitely um still durable and you're definitely not going to break it just by gaming on it or you know slamming it down or anything like that it's still fairly good quality um now I think when they released this, they were really ahead of the game. Maybe in 2024, they're still ahead, by the way. Um, but a lot of other companies are catching up, especially in terms of weight and in terms of um, magnesium mouse and hopefully 8K wireless soon. Uh, we haven't really seen too many mice do that, but hopefully we can see more of that soon. We definitely have 4K. And by the way, this is just, we'll talk about later in the video, but most of y'all can't run 8K anyways. So it's not a big deal, but it is nice to have. It is a premium feature um, on a $300 mouse. So it's definitely important. Um, but they also had a monopoly on the Focus Pro 30K optical sensor, which is a sensor for this mouse, which is incredible. Um, I forgot what MCU they're using, but it's also uh, premium and exclusive to them. But that will be getting released uh, later this year in April. So hopefully by April of this year, 2024, um, we'll be seeing a lot more mice with uh, 8K wireless polling, which would be very sick. Um, now, I'd love to praise this mouse a little bit more, but I can't. Um, because there's a lot of issues with it, especially for $300. Now, I am being biased here because it's $300. Um, whenever you guys are spending your hard-earned money on something and it's $300, you really expect perfection um, and nothing short of it. Um, it's very, very expensive. You could buy 
three endgame mice and have like 10 switches left over um plus script tape and skates for the price of this mouse so it's um <laughs> it's expensive so you want something that's as near perfect as possible and they definitely did not achieve that and not even close it's definitely a good mouse um probably overall give it like an eight out of ten maybe even a nine um but for 300 dollars, there's definitely some glaring issues that i feel like maybe it's overhyped within the community a little bit um the thing that it does have going for it is the shape it has the viper mini shape which was probably one of the most popular mouses to pretty much be ever made um it was like 30 bucks and it was great like everyone loved that thing um so whenever they released a wireless version of it obviously it was going to get a lot of support including from myself it's a great fingertip tip like grip mice um there's like it's very nice um you can claw with it especially if you have smaller hands i do have smaller hands here 18 centimeters long um i can still claw with it fairly nice um definitely not meant for palm or anything with larger hands as you guys can see 18 centimeter hands do go past it when I am relaxed clawing. This is not, you know, palm. This is a uh, relaxed claw and it still goes past the tip. So it is a fairly small mouse. Um, definitely not as small as like the B6 Mini or anything like that. And it's still a bit, um, in terms of length, it's still smaller than like my OP1. Um, but the OP1 is a lot uh, thinner and this is definitely a lot wider. So it's definitely suitable more for like medium sized hands. If you have small hands, you can definitely still use it, but definitely around 18 to 19 centimeter hands is definitely what I'd recommend for it. Um, other than that, let's talk about the big issues that this thing has. Uh, starting with number one is the coating. Um, it feels great. It feels very premium. It's very cold to the touch. Every single time I grab it, it's very cold, which is very, very nice. Um, but the grip, there's none. As you guys can see, it is just super slippery. If I push my finger really deep into it, there's like no friction at all. It feels like a very smooth, almost a glass-like surface. It's very, very smooth. So whenever you're gaming and you're trying to like pull back, you will run into this um, issue where your fingers will just slip on this and you won't have much control. Same things with the sides here. Sometimes you'll be trying to drag your mouse down and your finger will just do this on it. So using grip tape is almost essential for this mouse. So 49 grams, a bit deceiving considering it's probably going to be around the 52, 53 with the grip tape on. Um, or at least the stock grip tape because it's very thick. So it definitely is going to increase the weight of the mouse quite a bit. Um, other than that, the scroll wheel does feel really good, but it kind of lacks um, feedback. It feels kind of like dull and boring, uh, almost like it's nothing like the super light, but as boring as the super light scroll wheel, it's just very boring. There's nothing cool about the scroll wheel. Um, whenever you click on it, it's whatever. It's not something that you're ecstatic about, um, which I wish they maybe would have done something cooler with that, but it is also made out of magnesium and not plastic, which is really good. Um, the clicks do feel really light, um, but they are really, really loud. Like, they are really loud compared to like every other mice on the market. Um, they are obnoxious as loud, especially at nighttime. If you have like, you know, if you live with your parents or if you have roommates or whatever, it gets fairly loud. Um, which is definitely, I think, a negative thing. They definitely could have worked on making it a bit quieter on the clicks, because um, I do think that is a downside. So besides the coding and the clicks, you have the side buttons here on the side. Um, they wobble a lot, like a substantial amount. <laughs> more, more than um, I feel like people would like to admit, but it's pretty bad. There's a lot of wobble to them, or at least my copy does. Um, it's not something that I like seeing on a $300 mouse. It's usually not an issue. Like for example, my OP1 um, WE wobbles a bit less than it, but it still wobbles. But this was 90 bucks and it came with a free mouse pad. This is 300 bucks. I'd expect no wobble at all. I expect really good, stable feeling clicks from the side buttons, which I didn't really feel um, using this. Now, is it really worth it? Like is an 8K wireless $300 mouse mouse really worth it for you now this is something that i feel like a lot of people don't really talk about probably not can your computer even run ak like i feel like that's something that people just don't bring up at all um for everyone using a budget pc like if you're trying to like look up youtube videos trying to optimize your pc or how to get the best fps performance this mouse probably isn't for you like let's be realistic here um ak even 4k polling whenever you use it like wirelessly it will completely take a toll on your cpu i'm talking about like if you're getting 200 FPS before, you might get like 140, 150 
just from running 8k. It's pretty bad. Um, like I said, especially if you have a low end, maybe even to mid range or, or budget computer. If you have a very high end PC, you probably won't notice it um, at all. But definitely on the low end, 8k takes a big toll on your PC. Um, and it definitely takes one on mine. I have a mid range, I have a 5600X and a 4070 equivalent. Um, and it takes a big toll on my computer. I, I on average have 20 to 30 less FPS running um, 8K, which is not great. Um, and then for another thing that's like, you know, important to mention, I do have a 240 Hertz monitor. So I do feel the difference between like 4K and 1K. It's like not a big difference, but I definitely, it definitely does feel smoother. But if you're running like a 140 Hertz monitor or like a 60 Hertz monitor, it's, it's, you're not going to notice any difference between 1K and 4K, like at all. There's like pretty much no difference. It's very, very hard to tell on like a 140 Hertz or lower monitor. So you're definitely going to have to be playing on like a 240 or a 360 Hertz monitor to even feel the, like what true AK really is. So, um, that is another like big downside about it. And I guess like people haven't really talked about that. Um, now do I think you should buy it? If you have had the Viper mini in the past and you really, really enjoyed it, like it was your main mouse and you wish it was wireless and that's what you want, then yeah. I mean, why not? If you have 300 bucks to spend and you want a Viper Mini and you want it to be wireless, there's not really another option right now. If you want the exact same shape and you want it to be razor mice, you could probably just get this. If you're looking for alternatives, there's a million different things. And I think you should stay as far away from this $300 thing as possible. It's very nice as a collector's item, definitely worth picking up. But if you're trying to look for a mouse to main, I definitely recommend some other things. But if you guys are interested in the best fingertip mouse, or the best claw grip mouse available on the market right now, please make sure to go check out my other videos on the OP1 AK and the Beast X Mini. But thank you guys all for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.